Hello, my name is Ice37, and today I will be explaining my current route of 100% Survivor for Rain World. For some context, I am currently the 100% Survivor world record holder, and I have pushed the run down from the 3 hour mark that it was at to the under 2 hour mark that it currently is at. For this guide, I specifically want to be trying to just saying about the run and not saying too much about some some of the specifics that I'm doing. I'm going to bring up certain things when it becomes valid, but otherwise I'm going to be trying to do the run as it is and just talking through it. But to start with, I want to say a few things just to bring a little bit more from my previous guides. That being just some new things that have happened since those previous guides that I've made on top of just making sure that people understand if they're going into this run and they haven't done with other speedruns they know what some of, some of the things that happen if you are here just for 100% or we skip forward to a certain timestamp to skip past this part otherwise you can just watch this you have the timestamp show up if you're just here all right for the start with when you are on a save and you want to reset it also let me make sure of something real quick I believe I want to be on a different save slot. No, we're good. Let's say we want to reset a save. We already have a save file there. We hold the R on keyboard and it'll come up and we can check the box. If you're on Switch or PlayStation, you can hold the two bumpers. This being L and R for Switch and then Y on the Switch as well. Hold all three of them and then it'll bring up the box. On PlayStation, it's the same bumpers, that being not the triggers, the bumpers, and then the... whatever the left one is of the three buttons. And then it should bring up the restart game as well. Whenever starting a run, if you hold the S key, if you're on, play, uh, on PC, if you're on Switch or PS4, you can't do this, so don't worry about it. But if you hold the S key when you're starting the new save, it will not load in the starting cutscene and you'll start within 3 seconds instead of waiting, have to wait 12 seconds to skip the cutscene and then reload the game. Obviously this is quite useful as we start time when the circle fills. It's technically you become actual the moment the game starts. Outside of that, it's a basic idea. I'm going to show a little bit what goes on also i will be playing on controller there are some bits of different between controller and keyboard and i'll talk about that right here while we have the time i at the end of the day what matters is that you use what's comfortable to you regardless of what happens in some ways keyboard can be said to be better just because for controller you are unable to immediately press right and then left on a frame dime which makes certain moves a lot easier that being especially the fast pole climb because you need to be pressing left and right quickly so it can be a lot harder on controller if you don't care about that then don't worry about it controller it, however is easier to do the one tile roll which is as such here which effectively the one tile roll requires you to Instead of doing a normal roll, either force from a backflip, jumping out of a slide, or falling from a high enough height, like a three block height from a full jump can make you be able to do a diagonal input to go into a, a roll. If you instead do 10% down from the horizontal, you will meet, you can go into a roll. If you look at my joystick, you should be able to see I have about 10%, 15%. It's a decent range you actually have the ability to do so. You can set up a virtual controller to make your keyboard have a button that forces that downwards bit just a bit to make this possible. But otherwise, it's a bit easier to do it on controller as you get used to it. One of the things that you may notice is that this isn't, wasn't always something that was known. There's a lot of other small bits of movement that we're not going to get into with here today that have been found separately. Uh, very much recently that really break the game in a lot of very interesting ways however they're all very they're very difficult and a lot of them i will not be caring about there's one 
that I can't really show off right now because I'll need something to throw backwards, but effectively you do the extended back throw during a slide, except you jump out of it immediately, which gives you a lot of speed in the air, which allows you to keep that up, which is great. Additionally, there is the other one tile roll, which is, is basically you doing a fast fall, which is basically you going from standing to all fours as you are walking off a cliff, essentially. To make this in a useful situation, if I'm climbing up this, I can't do a one tile roll if I'm constantly doing, can't do a normal just 10% input if I'm just holding right all the time here. I would have to do the fast fall roll if I wanted to get a roll here. And so here would work for that version. And then you'd want to cut it out quickly. So you get the slide here and then get over here. And that's kind of the basic idea of why you would want to use these. Having rolls in very strange locations you wouldn't normally be able to get them can be quite useful. All right. So that is the basic idea of what I wanted to start talking about. Now we are going to talk about the run. All right. Hello, people who skipped timestamp. This is my route for 100% Survivor. We're going to talk about a lot of different bits of how the run has changed when it becomes relevant, but otherwise I'm just going to be going forward and talking about what I think is useful. I'm going to try to take this kind of like a marathon run, and that being I'm just going to say what is needed to be said as it's going on. All right. We held S. We skipped the cutscene. I have S bound to the left trigger on my controller, if you noticed. I've already messed up the movement greatly. Normally you can get a roll from the initial fall and then just keep going. That room was horrible. Do not try to replicate that. You usually want to get to this pole about 19 seconds once you get pretty good with it. If not around there. One tie roll is good here. And then 32 seconds into here is pretty good once you get really practiced with it. But otherwise, don't worry about your specific times. Those are just things that I see a lot because every survivor run has to start with that. All right, first interesting trick of right now is this, in which you can do a backflip and be able to jump up on that. Basically, what happens is you backflip onto the pole, which you then press jump again to boost off the pole that makes you in the air, but you're still technically touching the pole by the game's logic. And so you can jump again in the air and so you want to press that third jump you want to press jump three times once for backflip and for jumping boosting on the pole and then once in the air you want to do that third jump a little bit later in the, the cadence of the jumps because you want to be as high as you can before you do that third jump if that makes sense. You also want to slowly learn the timing for the backflip. But otherwise, don't worry about that because that's a more advanced thing. Otherwise, you we would be going up here and then jumping across and then rolling and be here. Or you just do however that's more comfortable to you. Also, this orange, lizard, this green lizard is going to be here quite often. If we're doing 100%, we're probably not going to care too much about losing a little time. They often really don't notice that we're here. We also do the little backflip trip where I just did to get the berry that's at the currently top of the room. We're not going to worry about that. I'm going to finish eating this. I want to actually try to get... Ooh, there we go. actually want to try to get one more food if we can for 100%. It helps out a little bit with the routing, but it is not needed. So if I went back and actually got one more of the berries from before, that would have been great. But you don't need to worry about it. Having extra food is never a bad thing. However, all right, we want to go to this shelter, same shelter as the pilgrimage and the the pebbles percent runs. And now we're here. All right, so karma caching. Just need to be able to save normally in the shelter. Then you want to be able to starve, which is you holding down. Do not have your head in the middle of the shelter when this opens. Otherwise, you'll fall through even though you're fully starved. And then you have to do it all over again by standing up at the corner and then kind of awkwardly falling into it. So just immediately upon you loading the save for the Karma Cache, hold it to the right and then you press down and then you can starve. 
And the reason why this works is because when we starve, it, it forwards the cycle, then the next cycle, which ups our karma, but we quit out immediately, which, because the game doesn't actually save because we starved, it will go back to the previous cycle. Because it was within the, it, within the 30 seconds of that cycle, it doesn't bring us back the karma because there's a safety feature of, oh, I accidentally started the cycle. You can still quit out within the first 30 seconds and you can keep the karma you have. But because the game hasn't saved, brings us back to the last cycle, which makes us able to starve again. And then we can just keep doing that as much as we want. Also, you can hold map to make the, the sleep screen go faster. We want to hold map when we go to Survivor, the top karma the first time, because it forces us to watch it, regardless of what happens. And so then we start getting the start of the first passage, which is the whole point of why we're karma caching so much right now, is because one, we can't leave outskirts very quickly, and two, and more importantly, for 100%, we need to get all of the passages. So, cannot get any progress on any of the other passages other than Chieftain, kind of, before we get the Survivor Passage. And so we want to Karma Cache all the way up to getting four pips of the... Getting four pips on the Survivor Passage, essentially. We do not want to get the Survivor Passage, we want to get the Survivor Passage in Farm Arrays. Actually. And so we will, but not yet, so we're just going to keep doing that one last time. One thing I just remembered is I'm actually doing the old routing. Because we. it doesn't matter where we do this Karma Caching, it's actually better to do this when we get the Farm Arrays. Why? Because... This next part is probably one of the hardest and most reset heavy parts. That being that we have to go past the scavenger toll and steal a pearl from them. I'll talk about the specifics of how we can make it easy to do such a thing. I might have be one under how many karma caches I should in, but that should be fine. But if we do the karma caching there, it saves us a lot of time to not have to reset all of this karma caching in its entirety. Also, one other thing before I forget. is there is a bit there is a, a way to do if you did the karma caching here and if you eat this flower we're gonna purposely die when we get to the the farm raise echo so we can activate it and then go to it mess that up that's fine and having the karma flower allows us to not have that do an extra karma cache that i don't want to do Because we're a bit slow doing everything, all of these guys are in the way. This guy's facing the wrong way for some reason. So one one thing I do want to say is, if you're doing really good, or you just haven't been doing as good as you usually have been, depending on how good you are, right when you get to this pipe, that purple that was up in front of us a second ago, will immediately come through this pipe because this room to our left just loads in. One thing I do want to say, and I'll point it out in the other location, is that when you're moving fast, rooms ahead of you that are immediately ahead of you may not be loaded in yet and when they load in all the creatures that were going to come through then immediately come through so sometimes when you cross halfway through the room which is generally when it'll load in if the room you're going to hasn't loaded in yet it'll immediately load it in and a creature will come through and that can really mess you up like right here you can immediately die to the purple if he shows up through the pipe right then Otherwise, we go this way, and then I'll show the other place where it can be a problem. But right now, we're not going to worry about it. We're going to eat these berries. But that is something that happens. And to be aware of. Additionally, something that people really don't notice, because there's a lot of weird little bits with lizards. But, one, lizards have to have time to charge up their bite. So that if they don't know you're there, you're, you're pretty okay. Purples are the most dangerous for this, because they have a really high bite charge time. There is a certain variable to it. I have not fully looked up everything dealing with it yet. We want to have this flower not to eat, but we want to keep it to give it to the scavengers because it counts as five rep points. A pearl is ten rep points and is normally what you use to get by a scavenger toll. 
So this room, right when we cross halfway, if we do it perfect like I just did, without even thinking about it, I recommend if you're doing this for the first time, you don't try to do that roll because you could mess it up really easy either by accidentally grabbing the poles there or by just not rolling long enough or rolling too long and then just kind of small hopping. But where we cross halfway through this room, lizards going to appear right in front of us and they might be coming through right now. Sometimes you get lucky. Never mind. I was right. These poppers are placed quite well, although they're still a bit annoying. These guys are generally gonna freak out for a bit. So it's always pretty bad when that happens. So if you get over here really fast, you can get past them in a fast manner. We might die by sliding into the pipe, but I was not able to space it correctly. All right. So we want this popper, we want to try to bring a popper into this room. Why? Because we do not want a lizard in the scavenger toll. So we want to throw the poppers to the left of all lizards that exist. There are four lizards over here. We passed three of them in the previous room. There's one in this room. Sometimes all four of them can be in this room and it's really annoying. But if they're not currently at the toll, we want to scare them backwards back where we came from. Because we do not want them to run forwards into the toll. All right, we're here. And I like to give the flower first. That's five points. The spear is three points. Then there's these spears down here. I'm going to try to go over here. And another three points. So we've paid the ten. He's now waving us through. You can see the animation he's doing slightly off screen. Then everything else we give after we pay the toll counts as an additional pearl. An additional ten points. Which is the exploitation we use to easily get... Scavenger rep. So now we're at 30. We're actually at a bit over 30, I believe. But we're at 30 scavenger rep. Given that we have paid the toll and we've given two extra things. So I want to give them two more things, if I so can. And one other thing I'm going to point out, if I... Yeah, the lizard's fine. Generally, I try not to go back. But we got a little unlucky with the spear spawns. The spear spawns in this little pocket down here are completely fine to pick up. Do not, under any circumstances, pick up the spears that are up the top left there. The only time you pick up any spears that are remotely immediately with an eye shot of a toll is when there's a lizard up there as well. And then you're okay to do that. If there's spears in a lizard, you can also pick those up or in any creature and be fine with it. But... Effectively, picture where I'm at as part as not part of the toll, but up here as part of the toll. So one other thing about what I just said is what I've just said is a complete lie. <laughs> In some of the testing that we've done, we have noticed that if you're at 50 rep, you can do a transgression against the toll and be completely fine. When it comes to a transgression, that's either running past the toll without paying or stealing a pearl from them both are equivalent you can only do one to a toll at a time so if you steal a pearl you can walk by just fine it's weird if you steal a, multiple other pearls you're also fine but a section effectively we're going to try to get the 50 rep by forcing the rep up and then stealing a pearl and be fine with it sometimes you're not fine Seemingly, you are not fine because sometimes when you drop things to give them stuff, it doesn't count as you paying for the toll. It counts as you, it counts as you just giving it to a scav, which will count as its base amount three for that local scav, which doesn't change the global that much. So there can be problems. Sometimes you want to give more, but I used to always just grab spears boost up and then drop them immediately right here and then go back and then grab more spears but i'm thinking right here sometimes counts as outside of the toll radius i believe it's 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 like in the gray area where sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't and it depends on how the scabs see you and how they see the when you place it down sometimes they're gonna be facing the opposite direction and they'll lazily walk over and then pick it up and they'll count as you just giving it to them instead of the toll it's a little weird the so walking forward and making sure they know when you give them the stuff is good oh we'll, that was a mistake i accidentally grabbed a spear that actually could have been bad but it's fine we're probably not at 50 because i accidentally grabbed that spear from him yep 
they are not happy with that at all. If you get lucky with scavenger placement like that, you can usually always go for it. If you get a scav that's hyper aggressive, it can go really badly. You just want to hold on to the pearl for now and do not put it in your stomach. We just are going to immediately sleep in the shelter in front of us. And then keep going. So one thing you need to remember is that if you fail, you need to be at survivor karma to go through this gate. And so usually at that point, it's just good to reset depending on what you're doing. If you're just doing it for the first time or whatever, don't worry about it. You want to drop the pearl in here, forget about it for right now. Then we're sleeping. So you saw me karma cash before, but really you want to karma cash here because that first cycle going past the scavs is the most dangerous. And so you'd want to karma cash to survivor as we are right now. Then, like right now. Well, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, we won't want to do it right now. We want to do it next time. So what's going to happen here is that the old route is exactly what I'm doing, which is karma cash and outskirts. Eat a karma flower. Come here. Also, I like that little jump off the wall to get enough height. That's just me. Also, these jumps here. So you can you can just straight up jump from the right side. Let's see if I can get a mouse in here. You can straight up jump from here to here normally. I believe you can straight up jump if you really time it right, but I wouldn't do it. I would do a roll or some other pounce to get over. Then you can straight up jump here. You can then also have a rock. You can then straight up jump here. You can throw a rock here and be able to make it or do some other pounce or jump and you'd be able to make it. Throwing a rock is the best way to do it. The same thing with back with the other part. You can just throw a rock and do it. All right, I'm going to re-explain why, where to do karma caching. You do a slide there and boost pipe. I'm going to re-explain the karma caching and why the old route is what I'm doing. But don't do as I do, do as I say kind of thing. But we get up to this, we get up to this echo. We need to prime it once by going to it once. And then we can't actually see the echo in the future cycles unless we're at survivor karma. However, it's better just to straight up die and go back than it is to go back and actually save. So we die. If you karma cash in outskirts, we ate that we ate that extra flower. So we don't have to karma cash again to get back to survivor. So now we can go immediately get the echo and then get out of farm arrays. We're gonna go back in the outskirts after this. But if we karma cash in farmer, if we choose to karma cash in farm arrays, which I recommend you do, you just get up to survivor karma in outskirts you then immediately go to farmer A's. you karma cash you don't karma cash far you save once in farmer A's. you get the echo you die and then you karma cash all the way to survivor passage is what you should do maybe that was confusing but that is the most efficient way to do that currently all right but now we're gonna get the echo so say we karma cash to survive get survivor passage and now we're all good to get the echo. We had something to throw. We would throw it here. But that's fine. If we get something to throw or grab one of these guys, that's good. We want to go down. And we're going to get the echo. Ooh, I'm realizing I'm going to talk a lot. All right. So one other thing is that in previous routings, once we get in the outskirts, I immediately go to industrial. But we want to go to drainage. And one other thing that is important is that we actually the most important passage is the wanderer passage which is sleep once in every region and because in previous iterations because oh, not previous iterations but because you can't get wanderer until you get survivor there's actually a bit more to that wherever region you get survivor in you can't get wanderer in it unless you return to it also it would be good if we sleep with a spear because then we can break it now and eat the food which is good if you do break the popcorn here and eat it this cycle do not eat the full eat to one less than full because going forward we want to go for muck and the next cycle we're going to starve and then quit out in drainage so if you eat to full, you can't eat another food without being able to starve. So you want to eat one less than full. 
you can only eat one thing and then still starve in drainage and still get progress on luck. All right, now back to the Wanderer thing. We cannot get Wanderer in the same region we got Survivor without leaving the region and then re-entering the region and then saving. So what we have to do and why we purposely get Survivor and Farm Arrays is because that we're re-entering Farm Arrays later to get the sub-echo. Maybe this isn't the best routing. Maybe someone could else find completely better routing. I'd like someone to really figure that out. There's a lot of routing with this that go one way or another. Regardless, currently the current route is pretty optimized in my mind. But there's possibility that there's other ways to do this much faster. Just if you change any one little thing, a lot of other things are going to change that you don't really realize yet. And that's what I'm kind of going over. So we're going to be going to drainage. I personally like to go for outlaw here. If you're just starting out and you really don't care about being too op optimized. Literally don't care about outlaw or saint. Those are the two ones we are attempting to get during the run. Not karma caching, not doing anything special. You can easily get outlaw and shaded citadel off the lantern mice if you really can't figure out how to do it in other places. Otherwise, you can also get Saint just by Karma caching at the end of the run, which is what I'm just going to do in this example run, because it becomes very difficult to do that during a run, especially when I try to do it while going up the wall. If you imagine a guy trying to get past a bunch of white lizards and not being able to attack them, this can quite be annoying after a while all right we're gonna keep going we make sure remember we have the pearl sorry we did that we're leaving say we eat the ate the popcorn we want to have one less food than full and we want to be going forward so we're going to be saving an outskirts we're going to be getting the wanderers pip of outskirts we're also going to be trying to kill as much as we can this cycle to see if we can get pips towards both Dragon Slayer and Outlaw. The purple kill and the green kill are very important. We will have the ability to get a green kill much later. We will not have the ability to get a purple kill in many other locations going forward. So if we can get one now, it's very good. It's generally good not to mess with this, depending on how this goes. That guy just threw his spear straight up. Okay. Very interesting. So that, that was the worst case scenario. This is the worst toll in the game. I don't think you understand how annoying that was. So, number one, if you come in from the left side of the room, do not ever go back to the left. Because if you do, for some reason, because this toll is so far to the left, it considers you to trespass the toll if you exit the room out to the left. If you entered in from, if you entered in from this pipe here and then exit back out without paying the toll, that counts as you trespassing. And so immediately you just... They will just kill you next time they'll see you. So do not ever do that. One other big thing is that this geometry here, this geometry is trash. You have no idea. Scavengers cannot see you here. And I cannot see you properly at least. So if you drop a pearl here, it might as well have just been there the whole time because it certainly wasn't associated with you. Do not give them a pearl up here at all. You want to come down here and throw it to the left like I did. However, because they were fighting a bunch of things, they weren't able to see it. If you have to pick the pearl back up, try to make sure you're holding something else in your hand to force the pearl to pick up instead of one of their spears. Because there was a bunch of lizards around, it really didn't matter what I picked up. I was very happy I didn't accidentally stab one of the scabs. If you accidentally scab one of the scabs at any point during that, the likelihood of the accident forgiveness mechanic actually working for once is non-existent so pretend that doesn't exist 
even though the lizard is eating the scavenger in, like right then getting these two kills was great because the scavengers helped we may or may not gotten all of these both of these kills yeah there's a lot going on with that you want to try to get you want to try to be standing here in a normal way where the purple isn't immediately within them is to come out come stand here throw the pearl to the left maybe laying down you want to do this fast or else they'll stop looking at you and lose interest and not notice what you do try to throw it directly into a scav if you can and then you're gonna to have to pick it up if they don't immediately pick it up you want to pick it up again if you can without grabbing any of their other stuff because if you grab any of their other stuff things can go wrong all right now we paid the toll we want to get chieftain chieftain requires us to be at plus 80 scavenger rep because we want it we were basically at 50 last cycle except we weren't exactly at 50 and then we stole a pearl we're probably at about 40 30 40 30 around there so we want that extra plus 50 for passing this toll to try to get chieftain immediately right at the beginning of the run so we've already given them a pearl so we're at 10 and so anything else we give them it'll give us plus 10 more so we're gonna give them all three of these spears and then i'm going to stop caring i'm not gonna pick up those other spears until this lizard shows up it is always a bad so in, in this situation what i'm doing is actually a bad thing if you are here this is the kill zone i know the other three scavs are wimps and idiots <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's true. Also, it was really funny how one of them basically threw a spear straight up. I have never, it, you don't see that. But if these guys were guys that throw spears and they're not very good at it, they will throw a spear over the, the green lizard and it will kill you. In any situation where you're first approaching this toll, I would not even approach the toll until the green lizard is off the screen. Because at this point, there's a very good chance that they can throw spears and kill you. It's very easy to immediately die off an off-screen scav that's not even trying to hit you at this point. But because I have things to work with... And I know they're not going to do anything. We're just going to do that. Because the spears are in their body currently, um, I can pick them up. And then we'll be fine. All right, one of the scavengers actually grabbed, grabbed one of the stuff up there. We've gotten three kills, which is great. The baby noodle flies do not count towards outlaw. And I don't remember if the purple from earlier died or not. All right, depending on what you're doing for outlaw, going down is the fast way to get the drainage. Going up can get you a bunch of squid cicada kills if you care about that. For now, I wouldn't care about it. And honestly, I don't think that's worth it at all. All right. I honestly am starting to think going forward that just getting outlaw and shaded is always going to be the good idea. But I'm still going to see if I can get it here just because the extra kills for Dragon Slayer are never bad. Kills on pole plants supposedly don't count towards outlaw. But if as long as you in future cycles... Like this next coming cycle when I go to drainage. If I kill just the pole plant, it'll make it so I won't lose outlaw either. All right, I'm going to check for murdering someone. Okay, no. And then because I didn't eat the popcorn, I want to eat these fruit. And then because we were at full before, I'm just going to eat the three here. Then we're going to move on. There could be a lot of purples around here. There could be the egg bug. And squid cicadas as well but otherwise we're just gonna sleep i've been talking a lot and i want some water now i know it's been half an hour also for anytime you get progress on a a new passage you've never seen before we got chieftain beautiful that's what we want to see if we don't get that i will show the backup which is much later in the run. If you're super garbage, Chieftain, 
you may want to try to cheese Cheapton in the industrial scavenger hideout because there will always be pearls there. You're passing there anywhere to go to garbage. It depends. But otherwise, you want to give pearls to scavengers in Sky Islands, which I'll explain when it comes relevant. For now, we're going to forget about it. The two points into Dragon Slayer, what we care about. Not seeing Outlaw at all is concerning. And I think I'm going to forget about Outlaw entirely. I've gotten Outlaw in a cycle on in Outskirts before. But if you just don't totally go for everything... It just doesn't work out sometimes. I want to get the spear back. That makes that kill. Make sure we don't lose outlaw. The outlaw progress that we've been getting. Yes, there is outlaw progress. Yes, I completely shank that spear. No, I do not want something in my hands because we want one of these berries. Bring everything you have all the way to the end here. Not what I wanted. Kind of trying to try the new move a bit involves you jumping out of the back throw is interesting all right we eat the berry in here because we don't want to be holding it this is the correct amount of food you want to be at you want to starve in drainage because effectively what we're doing is a broken karma cache it's not really what it is but it's us starving in drainage quitting out of drainage makes it so we keep all the passage progress we got well uh, we did during this cycle but we'll wake up back in outskirts where the proper save is. So we're going to get the Wanderer, any Monk progress we got, and any Outlaw progress we got. Is what we want to be looking for. Also, when I say Outlaw or Saint progress at any point, please take that with a grain of salt. You can still do it however you want to do it. Maybe you want to go for Saint right now. I don't know why you would do that, because you'll probably have to factor in the wall, but that's good. I would always wait for these guys to fall down on their own. If you do fall down in this bottom pit where these guys are, um, no one ever realizes this, but if you're on this pole standing at the top and like lean to the side and jump, you can make it here. Just fine. No one ever realizes that. You also do this roll. If you throw one rock, you can grab that center thing, but I didn't upright myself correctly. The axe a little that can go through this pipe is annoying for multiple reasons. So the worst place this axolotl can be is either immediately coming through the pipe when you get there or down here, which he can be there. I'd recommend thinking about having something in your hands. If you haven't eaten a berry from this point from before, you want to get one of those water chestnuts and bring it back from the water in the previous room. Now we're here, we're going to starve, and that's about it. All right, I've explained a lot of stuff. Hopefully going forward, it'll be more streamlined. But I just want to say everything that I'm thinking going forward there's been a lot of thought and a lot of changes into a lot of the routing we used to get drainage at the end of the run we would backdoor it from subterranean because because we have to save in outskirts anyway it gives us some chance to bring up some other passages like outlaw and monk specifically and you'll be able to get drainage. All right, outskirts. So, depending on what you're doing, going back up through outskirts and getting a squid may be what you want to do. Maybe you like bringing a squid through chimney. Uh, I'm not going to do that because it doesn't matter at all. There's this guy. I don't care about killing greens. You should not try to kill a green in that situation. So one thing about greens, everyone considers them to be lazy and dumb. The moment you hit a green, your death is upon you. His rage is undone and he will bite you very quickly. And know that you need to know that that's a thing. If you are not prepared to stab a green at least twice immediately in the back and then stun him with a rock before walking up to him and repeatedly stabbing him with those two spears... Uh, you can't take him, otherwise. He will overpower you. That's the fastest ways to do that, is what I just said. is two spears and a rock. There is other ways, of course. With slides, but... Traditional... Basic things is what I'm going for. Alright, this room. You have to climb up through here to get there. You probably pounce from the left as well. And then this jump. This jump you can straight up do... 
if you're really good at it, that being that, we'll do another jump just like that um, in industrial. But it's good just to know that you can straight up do that. Otherwise, you want to bring a spear there. It's always good to have a spear and a rock in your hands anyway. If you kept your spear in a rock or you got another one, you're going to want it for this next part. However, I'm going to try to do the fancy thing because I can. It'll make sense in a second. I'm going to drink more water. One other thing that you can always do in every gate is maybe you have an extra throwable. You slide and completely whiff it. Slide and back throw. It will conform to the ground regardless of any slopes. All right, this jump. Not this jump. This jump. So, that's one of the hardest things you can do if you don't really understand how to do it. It's a harder version of the backflip jump that I did before. You really aren't practiced in that. Just, just use a spear or pretend it doesn't exist and walk around to the right. I've never gotten that first try, so that was actually great <laughs> that I just got that. But it's much harder with it being higher like that. All right, so very important. These berries, we need to eat them. If Depending on how much food you had from before, we're going to be saving normally and then starving in garbage. Same thing as drainage, effectively. So do not eat to full this cycle. One big thing about this pipe, you need to always be worried about. A purple can drop from up above and then come down through this pipe at any point. And more importantly, right when you go through this pipe, there's gonna be a purple right there. You need to know that or you'll die. You just need to be thinking about it. This pipe is danger. Just believe sometimes or just don't believe and be prepared to look at it. Because the purple can be stuck between being on this ground and holding this. And then it's just looking straight down the pipe. And then you appear and it drops on you. And if you aren't prepared for that, you will die. I've seen it so many times. Alright. Also, I feel like there's some fancy trick. So you can just go up the left side of the room there. But I don't know. If you're going for outlaw, you can also go up to try to get a kill. I do not care anymore. Because the purple will probably be up there along with the blue. Maybe you want a vulture mask. You could get a vulture. Maybe. So one other thing about some of the sleep routing and why doing stuff like I did with the karma flower and why we want a karma cache in bomb arrays actually is to route some of these dreams at a right time. The dreams will be pretty consistent when they'll show up. It's after a certain amount of cycles from the start. And so being able to not have them show up on situations where you starve is good because if you starve and quit and during that you watched a dream, the next time you normally save, you'll also watch that dream. So now you watch the dream twice. Great. So glad that happened. We're, we don't try to care too much about it, but in some situations, we're we're thinking about it. That is a thing to think about. Okay, I have done horrible moving. Also, what I just did looked a lot easy. It looked real easy, right? To get in this room. But one thing I always like to say is the faster you are, the more consistent the game is. And what I just did is a lot of what goes into that. Maybe it doesn't make any sense right now, but one thing that a lot of people probably have experienced that have played this game casually or tried to go down here really fast before is that you want to get here immediately. If you walk around, take a little bit to get here, these two are going to be in this pipe system. They're going to be in this system here, and then it's going to be very hard to get down over here. If this green gets in here and he sees you coming down, you might as well say goodbye to getting in there anymore. Because now he's going to come up and completely block that side. Then you try to go this way and then maybe that guy's there. Faster you are to get here, these two just spawn. Maybe just stand up here. Maybe the purple goes up here. 
that's about it. You want to be prepared to go to the left, or you're screaming down here, and you're going in as fast as you can. A lot of things going to go wrong with just a green, and especially being here. So now, say something else happens. Green is here. He sees you up there. He tries to go up. Because their fast movement actually makes them lose friction, he will never move high enough. He will constantly be right here, entirely blocking you from going this way. And he basically will just not move because he'll just go up and up and slide down and up and up and slide down. And that'll just happen constantly. And you're just waiting there to try to go past him because you don't want to go to the left because this looks like garbage. Just go to the left if you see him there. Don't try. Because this guy, the green guy, will not get up there fast enough. All right. Sorry. That is one thing I want to say because I've seen it kill some people. Also, there's a face in the background. All right. So one other thing. <laughs> the old route to get... Okay, I'm sorry there's a lot of pauses, but it's really, really important to say these things. The old route to get Chieftain that I dreamed up garbage in some ways before we knew before we knew all the specifics of how to cheese chieftain is off to the right is the scavenger den two rooms to the right it's a hidden pipe it's a scavenger den there's a bunch of pearls a bunch of explosive spears depending on what you're doing maybe you want to pick up an explosive spear right now so you can kill a green lizard nice and easy in these next rooms we're about to go to maybe you want to do that maybe you don't whatever but we i used to always go in there Grab a bunch of pearls and hope the scavengers would come by. Sometimes they would, sometimes they wouldn't. And if they did, you just throw pearls at them. All of those things in there, despite being a scavenger den, not is not been picked up by a scavenger. It is not a toll, so they're not automatically there. Ooh, sorry. So you can pick it up and just throw it to them if they're there or walk around with it. And maybe they're there, maybe they're not. Scavengers can be in a lot of places in this region they always spawn and after like 70 percent five percent of the cycle they sometimes cease to exist it depends it's very strange watch them move around quite a lot but they can be here quite often but sometimes they won't be here that's what i wanted to say this can be a good place to get a little bit more cheap than if you need it otherwise i wouldn't worry about it because there's a better place i'm going to talk about the sky islands all right move on this room can have a green in it if the green's in it there's a high chance that it will get it will summon the vulture the moment you come in this guy's often right here he will often flash the pipe but he won't go through it because i have no idea why he gets stuck right here he just does that all right very important thing you want to have a popper for this room why because if you don't have a spear which you probably won't we got a lucky to have a spear and there's one right here you want to go up this way because going down in that pipe down there while there's two purples and two greens around the two purples and two greens by the way also it says oh well in the background i think <laughs> sorry uh if you're going down in that pipe that basically means you die because if there's this purple just sees you you can't see them you kind of can hear them there but you don't know exactly where they are it's always bad. So stabbing this wall and going up is good. But if you have the popper, you can throw it to the left and make sure they run away. And you're all good. Vulture could show up. Usually vultures are losers. This guy is not, apparently. That's unfortunate. That guy came in. Screaming fast. You hit vultures twice, they leave, by the way. The second one. I'm not sure if that counts for rocks, but that definitely counts for spears. You get vultures twice in any capacity. You get out. Also, him grabbing me. When you get grabbed by a vulture, you can never instantly die unless they don't have a mask. You will always instantly die if they don't have a mask, I believe. Um, vultures, when they grab you and you stab them in the side of the head, they will not always let you go. They kind of work like kelp. And that their grabs kind of well actually it doesn't look like up at all but their grabs are a bit on some of their stats and sometimes when they grab you and you stab them because of you always have a little bit of chance to hit them with a stab also rocks don't do anything if we don't have a berry we want to pop one right now by the way if you haven't eaten a berry you want to pop one there 
because he won't be another one. We want to save right here. But if a vulture grabs you, you have a chance to stab them like being grabbed with any creature for a bit. You want it to be a spear because rocks will not work. And stabbing them with a spear will not always work. So it's better not to get grabbed. But vultures are not a problem. Do not be afraid of the vulture. Unless you have nothing going for you. You want to make sure you eat the, the popper and then starve. And we'll get more progress on Monk. If we actually kill things, pretend we get progress on Outlaw. We want to have Outlaw now. If not, the next cycle. By the way. Outlaw requires you to kill things. It's not about you hurting things. You need to be the one that kills them. Alright, quit out immediately. Just like drainage. I have no more water. And my mouth is dying. I might stop for a bit. We'll see. Probably at Pebbles. One thing I also do want to say is... Monk and Survivor, right? They have the same 100%. 100%. No. No, they do not. Monk cannot get the Scholar Passage, which is what we're going to start routing in right now. Pick up this pearl, stuff in your stomach, pretend it isn't there anymore for a little bit, but we need, we're going to be picking it up and dropping it off in the same cycle. It'll make sense in a second, but we want to put it and leave it in a shelter in chimney. Because we're going to be passaging back into that shelter in chimney. Uh, much later into the run and then we'll want to have that pearl for later. All right. This is a bad situation We want to try to get this blue to go by so one thing you want to know is when a white lizard sees you And you're in a location where there's a wall it can climb on it will try to go low on you Well blue lizard sees you it will try to go high on you generally and So one thing you do want to know is say you've been seen by either one of these you want to go here. This whole spot here doesn't actually exist for them because they can't walk on a background because there technically isn't a background here. So that means they are forced to either go up or down. The blue lizard will go up and then they immediately become not a problem because he's looking upwards and he can't see you and they can just go. The white lizard will fall down. He will probably come here and try to lick you you just have to dodge that, and then he'll go down, and then he won't be looking at you. You can jump over. You probably want to stand here for when he's here, so when he tries to lick, and then you want to go up and across. And that's the basic idea of when I go. There is some crazy other things you can do with the squares here to make sure they can break licks, and then blue lizards are just annoying because they'll walk directly towards you and then fall on top of you. But right now, I don't want to know on him to know how here and then that doesn't work three two one now and then we're good and then this jump otherwise use that as a spear this is the same jump as the one in outskirts but without the slope it is the same jump though because it works exactly the same this is the worst case scenario the white lizard does not see us because it's not looking straight despite what you may see it may see us now no So there's things in the way, so it'll accidentally lick the things in the way. We want to go through them at the same time. It will grab spears and other things that are in the way with its tongue. So it's good that there. There's a white lizard there. There are at least two white lizards that can be in the way. There can be a third one, however, is one thing to note. So there is a way to cheese this. You can actually wall jump. If you have a spear, you can stab this if you come from below. We we'll also do this weird wall jump with a rock. We're going to pretend that doesn't exist for now. Essentially, you can wall jump, throw a rock, wall jump, pick up the rock, and then throw it again because it's still in the air with you. Very funny things. We want to try to have a spear going up here to pop the popcorn coming up. Otherwise, you need these berries. I'm just going to try to pop the popcorn. This jump can be very annoying. You just got to practice it a bit. 
and believe in yourself and grab that pole rung. Blue. Now we're here. All right, chimney. Like law, the other routes. We're just gonna be going up. By going to, we're gonna be sleeping on the shelter that goes to Sky Island. And we wanna, we wanna take the pearl out of our stomach before we finish the sleep. Oh yes, one other thing. So, this is actually kind of important. Doesn't really matter if you don't care that much, but in terms of routing, that's actually faster. What we just did in outskirts was actually really dumb. That shelter we just passed where I stabbed the white lizard, that's the shelter we want to sleep in for outskirts, not the one at the beginning of the industrial. We want to sleep on right side industrial, not left side industrial. We want to sleep there because it's actually in a better position than the one on the left side, because we're going to be passaging back to that, the, whatever shelter we've slept in later in the run. We're going to be doing two passages. One is to this chimney one we're about to get to, and one is to the industrial one, whatever one we chose. And so I only used to sleep in the first shelter, the one directly next to the gate. I pretend it doesn't exist because it is garbage and it has no reason to be there. But the, the one on the left side of industrial is the one I used to sleep to because we didn't go to drainage before and I wanted to sleep immediately and not have the risk of going through industrial. But because we actually go immediately from outskirts to there, it's not too bad. And sleeping on the right side of industrial, that shelter we've just passed, where I stabbed the white lizard, is actually much better to base everything from. From there, you would go to garbage, which would involve you falling down the broken bridge room. If you know what I mean by that, you can fall down into the water pit with a bunch of snails. And then you can end up right outside where the scavenger den is. Go to the left and then meet up with where we were before. And that's good to go to garbage. And then it's easier to get shaded from that shelter. And then we're also here going up the chimney right now. Wanted to say that. Bad I didn't show it. But that's a new routing that I haven't done yet. That I believe Hempamaz pointed out to me. It might have been Raccoon. I don't remember. But it's a it's a bit better than the shelter that I took. I just take that shelter all the time out of habit. Alright, we normally want to spear to hit this popcorn. Maybe I won't take it because of the sca this scavenger. This vulture is here. Sometimes there are going to be scavengers here. If we have Chieftain, we can take a spear from them. Um, without dying inside. Yeah, interesting. I really want this popcorn. Because we're really not going to have a chance to get monk progress with anything else. And I didn't eat those berries in Industrial. We passed right before the gate. So we need this popcorn. If you need to eat food. We'll eat the full for the first time in a while. Because previously, both normal saves that we did, we had to eat to at least one less. We'll bait the bite so we can go under easily. Purple is scared. That could cause some problems for us. The other purple is oblivious. Okay. Worked out fine. You can jump from underneath. Normally people don't really think about that, but that's a better way to get in. Does anything follow you or probably not be on the poles at that point? So they can't easily follow you. And then if things are on the poles, it actually gives you a way to get in. There can be, on this transition, it can be quite scary. Walking up through here, you're going to be like getting... Ooh. Well, going up through here, you're going to be getting a lot of music. Right when we get about here, you're going to get wind chimes, which is playing right now. You really want to be listening for what you hear in this room. You want to be prepared for a white lizard to show up. One also important thing to note is that all of this, all of this isn't actually background. Creatures cannot, creatures that can wall climb can't walk here, can't walk here. They can walk right here. So they'll always try to go through here and they'll often be like right here. Otherwise, they'll go down the side, either side. 
And so you need to be aware of that if you're going to be going through here. So they're either going to be, if you hear something, they're either going to be up here and not know you're here at all. And we're probably going to be right here. Or they're going to be on one of these sides. You need to be prepared for that. If you hear hissing, you need to be prepared to switch to the other side kind of stuff. All right, we're here. This part can go really wrong in a lot of ways. There's this guy. Come out and die. Probably don't do what I just did. I just knew I would be fine. This jump, I don't entirely understand because it gives me pain. Just kind of have to believe sometimes. Otherwise here, you can wall jump that way, whatever you're comfortable with. Kind of messed that up because I had a grab. I don't know what the purple just did. All right, also important thing, because I like to meme about it. This pit right here. Regardless of how far down you fall, you can always wall jump out. Do not give up if you fall. Do not be afraid to jump around there either. Be afraid jumping around this side, though. Be very afraid. Crippling fear, in fact. Also, we can hear the guy above us, so that's why I don't want to go up the middle, outside of the fact that I literally showed himself for some reason. So something that is very common is lizards to be here. So it's always a gamble to go up the middle. And you need to be really listening for things that sound like they're in the middle. Generally, if you hear anything, they're going to be right there. I like to go up the right. Outside of the left is actually faster. Probably because you can already tell. Um, if there's purples going to be, if the purples are here, they're going to be here. That's basically how it is. So I always go up the right. A busy a bit more control. I'm probably going to stab that one and the other one's facing a wall for some reason. The pole plant to your right. If you have the squid cicada, you can do one full hop from the ground to go up. A blue lizard went through us. You need to be aware that that is there. I'm not going to be going on any of these poles because they scare me. <laughs> and I just want to go through it so we can understand. But one thing you do want to understand is as a, if you have a squid cicada, you're hanging on the pole. You flip up to standing on the pole and you jump at the same time. That allows you to be able to make this jump. Otherwise, you can't normally get to wall jump this side. Uh, otherwise, you can do crazy things like po pounce into pole hops into definitely don't fall the abyss. Whatever you think is good. I'm going to press exit one day. I right, just take the pole here because we might as well go this way. If a vulture sees you, it's probably going to track you pretty well through pipes. And be pretty annoying. So at this point, despite me saying that don't be afraid of the vulture, the vulture can be very annoying here. Not because it can grab you, but because when you stab it or do anything with it, it can move quite er erratically and push you off the edge. That's what you need to be worried about. You need to be prepared for that. Maybe you want to deal with that. I generally don't, and I just wait a second. Because there is ways to counteract that quite easily. If you don't care about Monk, you can eat these bat flies as well. I recommend you care about Monk. You want to get Monk at this beginning stretch of the run. There is ways to cheese it later, or really whenever. To just have a berry with you. I recommend... So that jump I just did, I'm going to try to go down first. That jump I just did from the up here to here. I, a lot of people can accidentally be holding left and then slightly down and then go into a roll and then just die. A lot of stuff here can really mess people up. Just like accidentally falling to the divot for a second and accidentally doing a one tile roll and then falling off and dying is what I, the most thing I've seen. But jumping from here to down here and accidentally doing a roll will kill you a lot. Accidentally doing roll anywhere here can kill you. So I recommend grabbing the pole just to be consistent. Because you're gonna you're going to be jumping from here to here and you're gonna be trying to going down. So you're gonna be holding a diagonal without even thinking about it, and you're gonna do a roll and you're going to die. But we just remember we wanna activate the echo and then we wanna go this way. 
is what really what matters. So we went up there, we saw the flash. The moment you see the flash, it doesn't matter how long you're in that room for. You can preemptively guess when the flash is going to happen. Le start to leave the room. As long as the screen is still looking at the room, it still works for you. So if you're in the pipe, like you are dots in the pipe right now, but it's still showing the screen and then it starts to flash, good enough. Any amount of flash that you see works. If you don't see it, you have to re-enter the room again until you do. The amount of time you need to be looking at a room for the flash to show up. This is a very rare thing to have a white lizard here. He didn't flip over either. That was a little scary. The jump, not the white lizard, actually. But the white lizards can be here. It's very rare. They only ha come over here if they get scared by vultures, which isn't too often so that they actually go over here. But you need to be prepared for that as well. I just forgot the one thing I just said to remember, and that is to take the pearl out of your stomach. The reason why will make sense in a second. So normally we want to take the pearl out of our stomach before we sleep. Why? Because then the pearl will always be here. Because we'll definitely won't take the pearl out, hit the echo, and then forget to take the pearl out. The pearl has to stay in this shelter. You really want it to stay in the shelter. For some reason you don't do that, I will tell you the backups, but the reason why we want it to be there is because we cannot get Scholar until three things are met. Also, that movement I did is the optimal to go through the room. The first slide is what's important. Also, vultures can fall from the ceiling at any point. No one has ever died from a vulture knocking them off that is sleeping, but one day, hopefully. <laughs> you can... Also, when, when you come out of this pipe, you can get a boost out of the pipe and then be going off to the right and get a roll here to be able to effectively do this same roll. I can't do for some reason. Do this same roll and then get over. You don't need to throw the rock. Okay. Back to what I was saying about the pearl. It's easy to forget to take the, the pearl out of your stomach. And if you don't have it in that shelter... It is now worthless because there's no place that is worth going back to for it. There are other pearls you need to get, and there are three prerequisites to Scholar. One, having the Survivor Passage, like all the others. And then two, meeting Pebbles. And three, meeting Moon. One of the other important things is if you meet Moon, if you pick up a, a special colored pearl, any colored pearl, then meet the last requirement that cycle that pearl will not count towards scholar you have to touch it again another cycle we need to remember to spit out the pearl again and so we're actually going to be taking the gold pearl and doing that but if you meet moon and then touch a, a colored pearl in a cycle then it does count it's interesting how that works Regardless of what you do, you cannot make it not count if you met Moon beforehand, before touching it the first time that cycle. Or not. The same way. You can jump off to the right like this. Deaths during this part of the screen. Deaths where you're trying to go to the wall don't matter, by the way. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about dying here. Try to go as fast as you can. Pretend vultures don't exist. Same as Hunter, because you're probably going to have a lot of karma to waste. So the one scary thing that might be something to try to figure out to not die a lot is rolling up one block heights here. If you're at the if you're starting the roll at a bad distance away, it can stop your roll. Despite me trying to mess it up, I've got it every single time. But essentially, if you're at certain parts of your roll, it will stop your roll. So, depending on where you are in your roll, it can stop it. We just want to get up there, not die. You want to forcibly be holding up the whole time until you get in the correct hanging position. We want to try to be having a spear. We can. Do not care about this popcorn for now. And we're going to move on.
All right. I'd probably back throw this spear if I were you to try to go faster right here, but don't worry about it. Because there's probably going to be a lot of things right here. I'm not going to worry about it. All right. There's one drop wig, one blue, a lot of oranges we don't care about at all, and then four white lizards. If you're playing as Monk, there's no drop wig. If you're playing as Hunter, there's leap zerds instead of orange lizards, which is immensely more dangerous. So... No squid cicada. We're just going to be going up the right the whole time. There is ways to go up the left side on the outside, but I'm not going to worry about it. We can go to the left right here. However, the drop wig is commonly on the ceiling right here. You can see it there right now. I'm not going to worry about it. Additionally, the blue lizard can show up in this room. So, a lot of people think of it as a meme, and it is. Because it's amazing. But Blue Lizard's method of transportation, as in the some ways very true for Teal Lizards, they work a little different, is that they always try to go above you and then try to fall on you. This is also true for their pathing. And so they will go all, they will go out here and fall all the way down this room. And they'll be fine actually because they don't take fall damage and that's completely fine and there's still a surface at the bottom if they fall too far to the left they do die but that's different so that's the other thing you kind of need to be worried about a little bit going up the left side is that can happen i've never seen someone die because of that but blue lizards the one blue lizard in the entire this entire wall can often come over come over this way and then go down they never go in here never go in here, my experience Never seen them do that unless they have a reason to. And so for no squid cicada, I just go through here. But otherwise, I go up the left side. Because it's faster to do that. Blue lizard's common right here. Drop wig can also show up here. One very important thing to know is the drop wig on rare occasions can be right here. So if you come out of the pipe, boost... Drop wig is now dropping there. You're here like, oh, oh there's a drop wig. Oh, and then you die. And that's something you just need to be aware of. If you're climbing up the pole, trying to go fast to them, he can jump for you and he probably will at least grab you once and it might kill you. So that's one thing you need to worry about. This guy's here now. I probably should have just went up because he didn't see me the whole time, even though I thought he did. So consider blue, consider all lizards to have a cone of vision that then tapers off at the end. So the start of their cone is the base of their head. That's a little bit of the reason why I can't see us. I believe that's true. I might be wrong about that. I really haven't... There's been one little look-see on a gif of lizard vision. But haven't really seen it otherwise. Or... Otherwise, it's just experience of knowing what happens. Still thought he saw us. He wasn't acting like he saw us, but it still kind of seemed like he would be able to. Alright. So, for people who don't care, just go to the left. Forget about what I'm about to show you. People who do care, you can go up the right side of this area with, well, one spear, but two spears, technically, because we do need two spears at least. But... One spear, grabby, jump and hold right, jump, hold right, and jump. And then what you want to do for that jump, that jump I just did is the hard one, is tap left and then immediately hold right and press jump. You have to press jump to climb these at, at the perfect moment. Otherwise, you won't go up. My recommendation whenever you're just jumping around in areas you might fall off of or accidentally wall jump is just to hold the direction that you want to go in and don't press jump to actually be able to climb up on what you're going to because sometimes you may wall jump accidentally in this case it is better to press jump because otherwise you won't be able to climb up onto it just by holding the directional if that makes sense because a lot of cases you'll accidentally Flap onto a wall, and you'll be able to make it and climb up if you just held left, but you press jump, and then it wall jumped and you died. 
So in those situations, just hold the directional, do not press jump. In this situation, you do want to press jump to be able to climb it. And now we're here, now we're that. And now we need another spear. There's always going to be spears here. And now we have to go in the orange land, which is a bit painful. The orange land is more dangerous than you think. If you are going for outlaw still, or you have the chance to do so, kill an orange lizard here. The only other time you're going to have a chance to do this is, well, you have two chances actually, but in farm arrays and in sky islands. And depending on your routing of saint, you might only have here as your real choice. But I like to not do saint and sky islands in farm arrays because, especially sky islands, because you're going to have to walk past them in sky islands. You probably want to kill them in sky islands. But I especially don't like that because... I want to stab the deer in farm arrays to make them go faster. So these white lizards. So I have played pebbles percent. I have played 100%. I have done pilgrimage. I have dealt with these white lizards so much and seen all their stupidity more than you can imagine. There's a few things you need to know. The most important is the moment these guys fall anywhere down here their ai breaks and they cannot get back out and so sometimes they'll just stay there and spin in circles and never move again and you just don't want to go near them sometimes they go here and they will also never move again and then they'll be here and it'll be horrible if they're here it's also really bad because they can see you but they won't go down because they can't go down at all actually like, there is no pathing for them to go around here. They cannot get back up. They cannot get back down. They can just accidentally fall, and then they can be here, or they can be all the way down in the abyss somewhere with the oranges. So you want to go up without them seeing you if you can. If you have to get by one that's here, you either want to overpower them, if you have that ability, which you may or may not, or have them see you come over here, you do not want to get in this death trap because if a white lizard gets stuck here, you're not getting pie it easily. We go over here, it'll probably fall while trying to lick you, making it actually fall because it will fall from here to try to grab onto this. Sometimes it'll catch it, sometimes it won't. If it does catch it, uh, I recommend jumping because you're not stopping it coming unless you have a rock to knock it off. But that's my little bit. If you have, by jumping, I mean jumping off. If you have a squid skid, you can just jump over it. A lot of different ways to deal with it. Depending on how you deal with it, you might be able to... You have it lick. It has a, It can either charge its lick or it can charge its bite. You have it lick, you can then probably jump on its body and then get up here and then... You're especially attuned. So this guy is particularly annoying. We don't really have a way to fight him. going to do exactly what I just said. I recommend standing, and then he'll fall, and then he'll fall. Sometimes they don't fall, and that's pretty bad, but when you jump, they will probably also jump. Like, you want to jump under them and fall where he fell, and then be going off to the right and try to be going back up again. And he probably won't follow you if you go back up, but things happen. There's a white lizard up there. There's a spear there. There's a Stupid thing in my hand. So they'll go down as usual, and then that's where you can hit them off. Additionally, usually this is better on squid, but this is the cube of destiny that I'm standing on. If you can get to this cube and the lizard licks you, you can just go off to the left or you can go off to the right to break their tongue. If you break basically line of sight and their tongue while it's licking you, they break it. Yeah, they're not licking you anymore. One thing you do want to worry about is that they, as I said before, white lizards, despite the ability to go up above us or walk straight towards us, say I'm here, it tries to lick, I boost up, it misses, it will then try to rush me, and by rushing me, it means go like this, 
and then go up the pole and get me. Obviously, that has major flaws, mostly dealing with the moment it goes like this and goes down, it can't see you anymore, and then you jump over it. That is why this is the cube we need to be thinking about. Sometimes you can be in this pipe here. Very bad. And then roll. And we're good. You want to eat these fruits? If you didn't eat at some point earlier, you probably didn't eat earlier. So eat these fruits. If you can, have a spear with you. And try to eat to... At, at, eat to at least just being able to sleep. But otherwise, don't worry about it. This guy's running because of the rain. He would not be flashing like that otherwise. Although the pole plant can scare him. So, important thing to note. So that U room, that U shaped room we just passed before. That is where two of the white lizards live. The other two live all the way up here just before the top of the wall. The worst thing is they will never be in that room they spawned in. And they're actually scared to be in that room. We can use that to our advantage in some ways. But that means when the rain comes, they'll run all the way back up to that room. So if there's any white lizards behind us that you passed and it starts raining right now, you need to be worried. Also, we need to actually... Give me a second. We actually want to go up the left here because it's a bit faster. So I'm going to do that. But if you passed any lizards... There is a chance that they are actually one of the ones that live up here. And that means they're going to be running up there. And so if you're in these pipes that I'm in right now, they have to run through you. And that means they will bite you. If you start hearing movement down below you, uh, don't be in these pipes. Do not be in these pipes. You start hearing movement down below you while it's raining. And it just started raining when you got here. All right. Sleepy time. First going to sleep. And I'm going to go to the bathroom because I can. That was video. And we're going to get back to what we're doing. We're on the wall. Slept normally. We hopefully have taken the pearl out in that previous shelter and don't currently have it with us. If we have it with us, we're going to be spitting it out later and putting something else there. And right now, we're going to be going up to the wall echo and getting it. Right now, it doesn't matter what we really do, but we do want a white lizard kill for... white lizard kill for Dragon Slayer next cycle getting it while we're getting the echo doesn't matter the white lizards are scared to be in this room if they start coming down right now i'm gonna pretend they're not there if they see you here though they can attack you however he was still pretty scared because this room is scary but he lives here don't you just hate it when you're scared of your own home okay all right all right up not gonna worry too much about anything i'm gonna get the echo Move on. If we do not get the White Lizard kill for Dragon Slayer here, we're going to be getting it in Sky Islands. The one in Sky Islands is to the left two rooms of the shelter we're going to be sleeping in. Otherwise, the one in Outskirts would be the ones we would want to kill. Either before or later on when we go to Shaded. Man, wait till it fades for us. And then we're good. So if you're not at full karma. Already. You want to hold map during that animation. I don't know if you want to hold map anyway. It's hard to tell. If map makes things a bit faster. Sometimes. Because it's only slightly faster. On PlayStation Switch. It's very much faster. Because the current patch. Is very much faster for some reason. Well, that doesn't matter. We want to kill a white lizard now. White lizard can sometimes go through you. Depending. 
but there's only one of the two that is usually up here. This guy's scared of being here, but the moment he goes more and more down, he gets over it. He licked the rock in midair. Once you stab a white lizard, they get a lot more tame. Get out of my hand. I tried to eat it like Hunter for some reason. We got two bat flies for some reason. I believe we have Monk. But regardless of whether we want to get Hunter or not, we cannot actually get Hunter. Um, until after, because it would be eating a Neuron. We need to eat a Neuron to be glowing, because that's one of the requirements for 100%, because it's one of the upgrades we technically can get. The only one, really, but... One of the other important things we're going to be doing here is we need to bring a Neuron to Moon. It is the most important thing we need to do. One thing that people don't really know is that if you're full, you can put a Neuron in your stomach. Also, one of the other important things is that you can do roll here, roll up the pump, fear the wall, lag right then, and then we're good to go. So one of the important things to know is like what I said with the loading a lot long ago with outskirts is that when you pass halfway through the room, there'll be a scheduled lag slightly later. That's why I was saying lag right then. You can actually tell if you look over that right when that happened. It is very consistent. You know what you're looking for. It is always there. When people who are first doing that jump, it always catches them off guard. Do not roll right here because it's too short. There's also a colored pearl below us, but we don't care about that one because it doesn't really matter because we're going to be putting the neuron in our stomach. Through here is really good with the back throws. You can do the other variant of the back throw that I'm not really first in right now, so I'm not going to care about doing it. I tried to do it there anyway. These you want to do the normal ones because it'll conform to the shelter likeness of it. You probably want to try to have one more rock if you can with this room, but that's fine. Entering pebbles. When talking to Pebbles, it's generally time you want to run to go to the bathroom or get something. Because you're not going to be doing anything. Because you can't get out of the room. If you can get out of the room early, that would actually be great for the run. But we don't have a grapple bug. Which is the, the only way to do that, really. It is not worth it to get a grapple bug currently. Strangely enough, the spear didn't spawn near us. I'm still going to stab it now. Normally, there's a, a spear is down, down below. The only ones that spawned were in the ladder system itself. There's another one here. But generally, pop the popcorn. Don't eat it. Or do, depending on what you're thinking is best. But either you eat all the popcorn now. Eat. You do not want to eat the full if you're eating popcorn then. Because you want to actually eat one of the neurons and then put a neuron in your stomach. If you don't eat the popcorn... You just want to grab two neurons and then just run out holding the two neurons. Important thing about what I just did for this room. Top run. Fall straight down. Try to jump out of it and with a roll once you are starting to hit, go hit the ground. And then don't worry about it too much. And then next one, drop down. Try to roll and jump out of it. Next one, drop down. Try to roll. Do not jump out of it. Try to actually stand up out of it. And then down here, go to the left, hit the wall, be holding straight down, jump down. When you're passing over pipes, do not hold the directional. Otherwise, it has a chance to just push you away from the pipe. And then you could try to angle this if you're on controller. You can't really do that on a keyboard. And if you grab things and throw them, it will propel you in the direction you're throwing them, despite that not making sense. If you're going too fast, you can throw a rock backwards to help slow you down. Now, pebbles, we're just going to be here for a bit. One other important thing. So normally, we'll let the music sync up. Mess that up. Funny. Do not pick up any pearl in this room. It'll make him talk longer. But normally, 
he will not immediately give you the mark. The reason why he immediately gives you the mark is because I had my hunter save previously meet pebbles and then save normally. That'll make it so any slug cat that comes after him chronologically, that being both survivor and monk, have a flag trip so that the first time you enter, he gives you the mark immediately. And so if you did it as survivor and then had that had a save that did that at any point, you could have wiped it away and it's still there. And it also works for monk, but doesn't work for a survivor. It's interesting how that works. But that is the only thing you can do to make runs faster between other ones before the run has ever started. Just because it would be annoying to curate if it's allowed or not allowed. So we just allow it for now. We need a save that, that exists. If you need a save where that exists and by not doing it yourself, you can always ask people in the Rain World Discord or myself or anywhere. You need that. Additionally, there is the Rain World Discord, which is where we want to be standing here, by the way, and then jump straight up. And then Pebbles just completely pinballs us somewhere else. Why? We want to go in the left pipe. After a little bit, Pebbles starts to move us around and then try to put us out the, the shaft we came from. We do not want that to happen. Grab two of them. Wow, that was probably the best RNG we ever had. Then he'll be pushing us out again. So one other thing I might notice, depending on how much you mess this up. So if you leave the room very quickly. And then if you leave the room very quickly technically didn't start pushing you out of the room yet so you can then enter his room and it's he still thinks that was the first time you were in his room and if you leave the room and enter again that could he considers it that's the second time and if you leave the room quickly again that next time you come in is still considered the second time if you do it fast if you get out of his room fast and then that third time that you, where it requires as the actual third time he will kill you so that third time will always be you kill he kills you. But if you get him during dialogue or just being really fast right when the gravity turns off, you can go through his room an additional time during that cycle. That's one thing I like to say to people that it is possible people generally don't think about. Only during that cycle, I've only had it useful to myself once because I accidentally didn't have another neuron and accidentally ate it and went back. For another one and i knew i had the ability to do so maybe that doesn't make sense and if it doesn't do not worry about it because it actually doesn't matter it's just an interesting quirk so much easier to talk about all the interesting stuff when it's not a marathon and i can pause but maybe that's a little bit annoying i do understand that if i do pause at any point maybe you just want to skip it you want all the little interesting bits that I recommend not jumping until you're a bit closer. I still kind of over jumped that. You want to grab that pole so you can jump off the top of it. Then here you should be fine. The jump off that pipe. You probably grab into the, the left pole there right at the end and go up on that right side there. All right, so we have the two neurons. We didn't eat the popcorn before, so we carried them all the way up. So we weren't able to throw things. That is the one thing you need to remember. So now we have the two neurons. Drop one. Eat popcorn once. Eat this. Eat. Eat. Grab neuron. Go down. Shelter starts to close. Stuff neuron in its stomach. And good. That's what you want most important thing literally do not forget this press passage it will do this and then sometimes you'll forget and you'll be spamming buttons and then you accidentally press pa press continue instead of passage if you do not passage here the only ways you can be able to passage again is if you die so either you have to go back to pebbles or you jump off a cliff in the wall it's actually hard to die quickly here so you need to remember to passage here. All right, we're going to go to the right first. Try to be a bit slow with it because the game dies inside. If you also always check to make sure you go into the right shelter, because if you 
if you passage to the wrong shelter that you've never uh passage to if you never slept to at any point during that run it makes the run invalid you want to make sure it's the right one recommend also if you go too fast through the regions it can break the game and just not be able to load the region i've lost a run to that don't spam the button maybe do maybe you like to live on the edge but i have had the passage screen break and it just doesn't allow me to pass it whatsoever all right we're gonna be going to shaded now you may pretend that we actually slept on the right side of industrial well i guess it's the middle considering there's a a shelter next to shaded but whatever i like the, the right side because you don't often go to shaded from industrial really We do not have a blue kill. I'm going to get one now. You can get one later in both. Didn't need to stab it a third time. You only stab it twice. Um, you can get one now in Sky Islands. That guy probably didn't even know we were there. Um, and then in also Subterranean. So you don't really need to worry about it. If you don't have a purple kill, you do want a purple kill. Or a white lizard kill if you can get one. But... You can get one pretty well in in um Giants. all right important thing you may be like berries food uh you already have monk we're gonna be getting hunter from now on we're gonna be we're gonna have a very easy way to get hunter going forward as well i'll let you know where to what to eat as we go if you can get bat flies at any point good also this jump here does the fancy back throw instant extended hop of destiny whatever you can do it from here and then get over here it's very good otherwise beer very good you can do a tomato hop as well to get up which is the quick turn jump critics exact name yeah do not eat the bears As you can tell, to me, I just enjoy playing the video game. All the fancy movement stuff is nice. I should learn it. But honestly, probably not. I probably will eventually. Also, I like to point and laugh and pretend. Aha, we're not getting the unlocks just to annoy people every time it always gets someone they're like get the unlock no so we did decide that getting all the arena unlocks is not part of 100 percent why because the arena unlock speed run that i've done and a few other people have done takes like five hours on its own without doing anything else so this being the 100 percent that we chose which is all passages all echoes Meeting moon and pebbles, giving moon a neuron, eating a neuron, any neuron. You can eat moon's neuron if you think that's faster. Um, still have to give her one. And then beating the game is what we decided to be all the things that you have to do. I say all passages, all passages, all ten. Maybe there'll be a true 100% with all arena unlocks. We'll see. I'm just going to do basic fancy movement. We're not going to want a spear later. You do not have outlaw. You want to get outlaw here. I do not have outlaw, so we're going to be murdering the mice. Every time I murder mice on stream, Oku is always there. Oku loves the mice. So of course it had to happen. <laughs> That's <is> my experience. <coughs> Ooh, sorry about that. All right, so we want a spear in this next room. Oh, it's a spider. There can be a spider sometimes. It doesn't really show up all that often. But there's usually a spear right there at the end of this room. We actually did see it. I'm going to grab this just in case. Got that little spider. We want to stab that there so we can actually get up. And then we're moving on. Also the wall climb 
that you can technically do, but that's too hard, really. I'll take this too. I'll roll. I'll roll once I roll is very useful here. We have chieftains who so don't want to worry about these guys too much. This room is good for murdering, except I completely forgot the geometry. If you have a spear, you can stab this wall, or you can do a cloud jump. What I call cloud jump could be double jump, could be wall jump, air wall jump. Um, effectively, what happens is lean against wall. You are now both on the ground and on the wall. Coyote jumping makes it makes it so that you have 15 seconds once you stop touching a wall or a floor to be able to jump from it. Because we're touching both, we have the ability to jump off of both so we can jump off the ground, jump off the wall, essentially, is what's happening there. And we want to go to the left, and then we can go up. That is what's happening. We can press jump twice. We want to do it within 15 frames of leaving the other thing. You want to be holding into the wall, and you immediately want to be holding away from the wall when you're jumping. That's used in a later thing as well. Not gonna worry about it. Probably should have took a spear from those guys. So, mice like to run around this room, and they they rile up all the spiders. Right where I am right now, there could be a mass of spiders uh, that will murder you. Beware of that. I should be killing these mice. It's annoying me. You want to kill about seven things in a singular cycle to get outlaw. Otherwise, you need to kill like one more thing if it goes between multiple cycles. If that makes sense. Like, you need to prime the cycle, the outlaw, every cycle by getting one kill. And then all other kills after that actually count towards it. We want to eat bat flies now if we can. So the thing about this room is that the baby spiders everywhere really like to kill all the bat flies everywhere. Accidentally double grab that guy. Fortunate. Okay, grab that spider they were killing. That bat fly they were killing. Gonna be a lot of spiders in here. If as long as you're just fast, you'll be fine. Okay, he's gone. Yeah, there's a lot of guys to kill here, but I'm not gonna worry about it. We can kill stuff later cycles. Wanna go down here? Sometimes you can be really slow and you might just want to sleep instead of going over here. I come over here to activate the echo and then sleep because I can. I'm very used to doing the, the run. It's not too bad to get over here from industrial. Bat flies are also going to be here, which is honestly going to be easier. You want to go over here and jump to the side and then not fail miserably. The slopes on these things can mess you up either by jumping to them or jumping up into them. So, three, two, one. I'm going to guess now we didn't get it. There it is. If we timed it right, we'd be able to start seeing the flash as we're leaving. As I talked earlier in the chimney one. Also, I didn't say the wall and the chimney, the wall and the train echo. We also do the cloud jump thing there. Very useful there. Thank you. The subterranean and the wall echoes cannot... do not have to be primed beforehand compared to the others. That mouse corpse isn't there anymore. It's now on the ceiling. Interesting. And we'll be sleeping here. Very good to have the cycle go well. We had the longest cycle. If you don't always get the longest cycle, it can kind of go weird ways. All right, we're probably going to progress on stuff. We'll see where Outlaw is. We really want to see where Outlaw is. We want to see if we have to kill things anymore. We do not. We're good to go. We can get the Echo now. So this cycle, if you didn't get Outlaw, 
Don't worry about it. Do not kill things right now. You want to kill things while you're going to shoreline after you get the echo. Because things you do during the cycle, you get the echo, do not matter. Towards any passage progress. If you're going for Saint and then you starve and then hit an echo, that next cycle. That cycle you're hitting the echo doesn't matter. We have the mark now, so now we have to time when he talks to you. And so we want to also time that so the text box shows up at all or we're leaving the room as soon as possible. All right. It is shoreline time. I don't actually know which way is faster. I think going up to go to shoreline is faster. Going up here. We can also go down the way we've been going this whole time. Also, from now on, we can technically go for Saint. Oh, the Kelp spawned! This guy's rare. He also can kill me right now. Alright, it's Kelp, kelp education time. Help education time. Please see me. Where are you? So. Important thing about Kelp. Other than the fact that he's being really weird. Probably because he's messing with that stuff. So Kelp worked in a very different way in grabbing things. They have their health. And they have a certain aggression stat. Associated with them. Depending on their aggression stat, depending on their health, means depending on... Makes it so they can only grab things depending on their health. So, I guess what I'm trying to say is, if their health is low enough, they cannot grab anything. So right now, he originally could grab me. Sometimes they can't straight up grab things ever, depending on their aggression stat. But he originally grabbed me normally, then I stabbed him, he let me go. And then he'll never be able to grab anything ever again. I think he can grab things that are injured or dead. If they're like less than one health. Everything technically has one health. It's just resistance. I believe. And then he'll be able to grab it or not. In some cases they can have a really high aggression staff. Where you stab them and they do not let you go. In some ways you can consider that to be like a vulture. But it's a bit different. Does that make sense? A bit interesting. But that's why it sounds like he's grabbing things multiple times because he just straight up can't grab anything anymore spider's gonna be right there do not do not rarely ever actually see the spider do things this whole section shaded bridge has claimed many lives despite the fact that it is not very complicated also you gotta believe to do that jump i gotta believe so despite the simplicity of the terrain one, everyone's scared to do it, for some reason, to do it fast. So if you want to figure that out, that would be cool. And then two, it actually has killed a lot of people. So will actually be scared of it. All right, shoreline. Nice. You want, we're going for Hunter. So all food here is irrelevant because it's disgusting monk food. Depending on how you can set up that fall off that screen transition, it can be really good. I'd like to not take the boost out of that pipe because it sends you really high up. This whole pole hopping stuff is interesting as well, depending on how you do it. Wherever you go swimming, you want to try to enter the water going head first. Because then I'll allow you to not have to turn around in the water, because you're generally going to be going downwards. Kind of set up. Additionally, so I should probably explain swimming a bit. So whenever you're doing swimming, it's more effective on controller because it literally makes you swim faster. Do not press jump 
at any point. First of all, do not press jump at any point unless you're sure it's going to work. Every time you press jump it makes you a bit faster for a second, but it makes you lose more air for like an instant burst of losing air. So it can kill you. It will kill you. But wiggling around like a snake up and down, up and down, counteracting the buoyancy, not just holding down, not just holding up, not just holding forward. That'll make you move faster in the water. Hard to explain. I just got to see what I'm doing. Also, these currents pushing you downwards, you kind of want to work with them, if you can. Also, you generally will always... The back throw is not good there, because you bounce off the wall. Generally, we'll climb up the left side on the other part. We want one of these jetfish, if we so can. There's generally a lot of jetfish, and they're generally eating the leeches there. So here is danger land. Dangerland includes both Vulture and Giant Death Leviathan. Leviathans are actually a lot scarier than you think. I don't know what experience everyone has had, but they can turn around quite quickly. Here's actually quite a scary position. If he's leaving the room, which he is not, they will not bite you. It's actually pretty bad. But we want to try to bait out his bite. He might have already bitten. The way he's acting. Yeah, he did. If he is bitten at any point, he does not have the ability to bite again for like two minutes. So like a really long cooldown. If he has gotten really far in his animation and there's been a certain noise that you can hear, you can also be able to just get by him and he won't be able to bite. And what you want to try to do is bait out that bite. And apparently he tried to bite the other jetfish, is apparently what happened. You want to bait out that bite, you want to preemptively back up, like, a lot. And then, we also want these jellyfish. You only need to eat one, or, you only need enough to be able to sleep. Depending on how many bat flies you got earlier. There's a lot in the way, so you can get these two and it will work fine too. We want to go up through the middle. Depending on how good you are at movement, maybe you're really good or not. But one other thing, when we enter this room on the left side, if you pounce and throw two things in the air, you can make it into this structure that I'm standing on right now on the internals instead of having to come up through the water. Also, you can either stab a pole into the ground and climb up at the right point. You want to stab it over here. Or you can just straight up roll up into it. We want to go up. So if you can't do either of those things, go up on the left side and come up the left side and then come up over here. Then we want to go to the right. We don't want to go to the moon yet. Here, here, and here. Grab this. Fall to the right. Fall on the slant. go and we'll boost and we'll go down so we can get another boost and we'll throw the pearl because we'll want to keep it right there we'll drop down we'll boost and then we'll swim a little bit swimming underwater is slightly faster and we'll stand here very specifically do not walk into her range where she can talk to you take out the neuron jump throw grab Goes into the air. Have her talk. Walk away. I am grateful the reef is indescribable. I don't want to hear you say another word, Moon. Good enough. If you have her, start doing her extremely long talk and give her the neuron. She will not put it up in the air, and that will not count as you giving her a neuron. You have to wait through the whole thing. So you want to give her to her before she even knows you are there. All right. Another important part. Sleep time. Let things close. Stuff pearl into stomach. Now we're passaging out. We're gonna go all the way back to chimney. Also, very cool quirk. This may or may not still exist on Switch and PlayStation. So the first time you meet Moon chooses if we get this cutscene or the one where we're friends with her. And it is set to just a difference to five of neurons, not equal like 
less than five. So us giving it to her triggers that cutscene. I don't know if it triggers the the achievement, the Steam achievement or not. But very funny. Starting to get Hunter now. I press continue like an idiot. We want a passage. Not press continue. It's not too bad because we can drown ourselves here. So we can passage. But yeah, don't want to mess that up. Messing up small things like this. Maybe a little annoying. Alright, we can just stay right under here. And then we die. If I press jump. I press the jumping, the boosting in the pipes don't really work to make you lose air, but doing it in the open water does. As it should. Oh. We want to go to the left. Left. One, two, three. Chimney. That one. And now we are in chimney. Well, so there's going to be pearl here. And we have the pearl in our stomach. We've met both moon and pebbles. So now just touching both of these will get us scholar if we don't, if we properly save. We do not need to bring these with us. Just need to have them together. So, now here is, I don't have Chieftain, the run is nearing the end, what do I do? Alright, now if you had these two pearls, you at least have the one if you remember getting the gold pearl from Moon. You had these two pearls, we're going to the left. We bring these going forward. And then there's actually a scavenger merchant right up in front of us. Most people forget it exists because there's no reason to go to it whatsoever. Also, these scavengers can be here. But we'll go to the scavenger merchant because we can. Hello. Love me. There we go. The scavenger merchant's over here. I'll show it off. These berries are terrifying because they actually can block you. I like to grab it and throw it if you can. If you have the pearls, you can't really do that. Yeah, the scavenger merchant, this guy will always be here. If you give pearls to this guy, you want to drop one here, run to the other side of them, and then drop it again. Drop the other one. Because he'll try to leave the room once he gets payment, a pearl, through this pipe immediately. Do you want to drop one? Then drop one in the way of where he's going to exit. This guy is generally always going to be tame, even though you don't have chieftain. He may or may not have his friends. These guys wander around the whole region, so they could be anywhere. Also, at this point... Also, the flower's there. You can give them the flower. So at this point, I need to go to the bathroom again, so I'll be right back. Alright, we're going to continue going forward. Also, this room has the sparkly light effect. This obviously can be pretty dangerous of all the things around. Purple there we want him to come across. I think we can make it up the pole up above, but it's a little annoying. We're just gonna do that. This purple can't really get up here once he fell down. That guy has been murdered. Oh, I could save you. I think I killed the scav. Yeah, I totally did. That could be bad for Chieftain. So you can lose the Chieftain Passage, by the way. We do not want to lose the Chieftain Passage. However, we gave them pearls, so we actually have bonus rep. So you get Chieftain at 80 rep. You, So you can go up to 100. Ooh, that could have been bad. So you can do some things with your, your privilege. Alright, I'm going to be doing Saint later, so I don't care about Saint at all. You might be, you can start Saint from 
shaded all the way up through farm arrays if you really want to. Also, I should have grabbed the squid. Also, very important. Grab the squid. Always grab the squid. So this squid, the ones back a few rooms ago, you really want to get it back a few rooms ago, the one where I almost fell off the edge to grab the pole. That is the room you want to get the squid in. You want the, the white one, because the white one will not get tired nearly as easily. Also, we want bat flies, because we want meat for Hunter. Falling off like that and shoving your face into the mushrooms is the way to grab them. Because you can still grab bat flies while holding a squid cicada, despite being unable to hold other items without using a glitch. Easy to perform glitch, but still. You can still grab them because your free hand you technically have a free hand that still auto grabs bat flies. So if you it only will grab if you shove your face into them. So that's basically what I'm trying to do. You can also eat the bat fly while standing entirely still with the squid cicada. Alright, we want to prime the echo. Priming the echo can be pretty annoying depending on the orange lizards, because they'll all come coming up the up the the ladder the moment they see you and you have to wait for the bit to go off this guy this white lizard is angry we want to try to keep this squid if we can so we'll try to bring him all the way to the please he's already carrying something so we can it's fine so the fact that this center wing is in this been with us for a very long time means that he has a chance to attack us now. The center wings won't actually attack you unless you attack them or you're just in the same room as them for a really long time. Those guys just fought over the squid and I was able to pick it up. Lizards cannot grab things that you are currently holding. By the way, I believe this is true in all ways. So things can might be grabbed. Things can only be grabbed by one thing. With that one bat fly, now we're here on change squid cane is very interesting. Things can happen. Game is interesting. You just roll with it. We died once, I believe. Yeah, we had to die purposely. We got two points into... I think we lost Chieftain a bit there, which is bad. Hopefully we meet more scavs later. Both either in farm arrays or... Sub. We got the two pips of Scholar. I'll talk about the backups for Scholar when we get to it. Orange Lizard. We want to kill an Orange Lizard this next cycle. The Orange Lizards right now are actually invincible. Where they are right now. We can push them around like Silly Putty. Each body chunk will be completely separate, invincible, and floating in midair. And you could stretch a Lizard as much as you want if you really want to. When they're down in this room below us. Very interesting. Yeah, we lost a bit of Saint. Us a little Chieftain, I mean. We're going to have to give them something. It looks like we can give them literally anything. So hopefully we run into them at some point. They can be immediately outside of the shelter. Which won't really help if there's not really anything to give them. Why? I have mushroom. I forgot there was mushrooms here. really bad. I grabbed his spear. 
but maybe the mushrooms will counteract it. We care about the global rep. It's bad we stabbed the we stabbed the scavenger while he's being carried away by the the vulture, and I didn't need to do that at all. I just thought it would be funny if I got him out. And now they hate us because of it. Only slightly, though. But we might have gone up in a rep because we gave three mushrooms. Don't want Hunter. These bat flies would be nice, but they by no means matter. I'm not going to care about eating them until a bit later. Technically, want to fall all the way down the right side and then fall into this pipe. All right. That guy must have been pretty aggressive to me almost having Chieftain, but he's still attacking me. But yeah, despite basically having Chieftain, they're still going to attack me. That's why scavengers are pretty jank. Do not need the squid anymore. So having one bat fly there is actually going to be pretty good for the food balancing later because we're going to want to eat two centipedes which will both give us two pips and then we do not want to be at we do not want to be at six food six or seven food we want to be at specifically five if we can so help it Yeah, no more squid cicada. You can technically take it if you really wanted to, but I'm pretty sure it only slows you down. You didn't even need the squid cicada there at all if you didn't want it. Just, I feel like it makes it faster if you can. All right, throw everything you have. Grab both of these. You want both of them. Very important. I'm going to explain deer in just a second. So, you throw a puffball. Deer make giant sounds. That means anyone that are any deer that are in the room will go to where that puffball has been thrown. Additionally, a deer will be forcibly moved and to force the spawn in that room to show up in that room because they already exist somewhere else. But they will forcibly show up in that room. They can either enter from the left or the right side. In some cases, there's only one side to enter in, but that's not always relevant. Every time you throw a puff and it blows up, one will come in from the left or the right side and will try to sit where you threw that puff is. You want to have two... Please don't do it. Okay. You want to have two puffs because you want to be able to throw one and make them sit down there for a second. And you want the other one so they actually stay next to you. We're going to have this. We're going to throw it. We're going to have this down. I'm going to try to eat this guy. Probably shouldn't have left it there. Sometimes you can go back into that room and it'll unload this room and everything will move really fast. So one other thing I didn't really... We heard him. We heard the deer. One other thing I didn't really talk about is that when rooms are unloaded, creatures in them move much faster which is why when you come into the rooms and they just start to load in a lot of creatures will be going through that pipe right then that's just how all that happens he might be in there dot p i want to take the puff with us because we don't want it to be accidentally eaten by deer that move too fast there is additionally another puff right here for emergencies Technically, you only need the one puff that's here to throw it, and they, they're they just there. Or you get lucky, and there's one already here. Which sometimes happened. This room probably unloaded. Never mind, it didn't. It'll take a little bit for you to go through it, if it did. It's good to throw it here. And then do not be holding the puff, because the deer can see you from a really long ways away. And if they see you holding the puff for too long, they'll think that you're just trying to mess with them. And then they'll just walk away. Don't do that. So it seems like both of the puffs we threw on the deer on the left side of the room. That's unfortunate. This guy has been going over the whole time, though. Do you even care? Apparently you don't. So generally, 
Generally, they'll go for the actual puff, but sometimes they get overridden and they'll only go to where you threw the puff. So now he'll try to eat it, but now it doesn't matter because we're on his antlers. It's good to have an actual puff because then he'll definitely sit there and wait a bit. Otherwise, they'll just kind of get near to where you threw the puff and they'll just back away. So if you throw it into the, one of these pits here, if you throw it into one of these pits here, that can work out where you can still jump on them. Um, if you're running out of puffs. All right. Additional thing. Stab deer. It makes them lurch forward a little bit and sometimes can make them move really, really, really fast. But they then become threatened and will try to leave the room. They will leave the room at the nearest exit they can find. So we do not want to stab them until they're halfway across the room. You do not want to stab them at all on one entrance rooms, as we'll be in one in a little bit. Additionally, we'll be doing a very particular glitch to help us get past the, the last room. I did not kill an orange lizard, so we need to kill an orange lizard now. I just realized I can stab the, the deer from going forward. Do not spam buttons too much because you'll drop your stuff and that's bad. Now the deer is only trying to leave the room. Okay, perfect. It's good to have antlers where you can just get behind its head and then just throw it into its head constantly. But you don't always get that ability. At this point, this deer will no longer respond to puffballs whatsoever because we have stabbed him and he's scared. I believe this is also true if he gets hurt by any degree by other things, but that generally does not happen. All right, we need to kill an orange lizard, so we need to go down. Which isn't what we normally would do. Because we normally would have already had one from Sky Island's dead. All right, I don't want to get them here. It's a little annoying to get them in other parts. We also want to try to make sure they're isolated. That was annoying. I want to make sure they're isolated because they can kind of gang up on you quite easily. So you do need to remember that orange lizards are basically purples and are just as scary, despite the fact that they're generally not. I'm not really scared of them anymore, though. So they take a really long time to bite and sometimes they just won't bite. Very quickly, at least. So you can just straight up jump over them in certain cases. That wasn't the best thing, but we got the kill. All well, that matters. I think time has run out. Yes, just got darker. We need to do glitch very quickly. We get so lucky. Might get lucky. I don't think we're going to get lucky. Time to go. Alright. In case of emergencies, generally you do not want to purposely go this way. I might die, actually. Give me a second. So generally, this is only if you can't get past that deer section. That you actually go over here. Because there's a shelter over here. What's really bad is that the shelter is in a room with water already in it. So it starts filling very quickly. I need to pay attention here. It's a lot easier to see 
when we have enlightenment. Fine. Starving. That's really bad. We'll figure it out. We're getting their stream. Generally, we would get this right at the end next to subterranean, but now we're getting it here because we're starving. So we're going to have to figure out how to deal with this. It's generally bad to have to save here. I kind of messed up with the orange desserts, so that messed up a lot. I was able to eat a thing, so we're still going forward with Hunter, luckily. If we didn't eat anything, uh, we would still keep Hunter. Because we definitely technically didn't eat anything, so we don't keep or lose either Hunter or Monk. I do not believe there is enough food in this room alone. So, starving! If you perform too many actions, you will fall asleep and recover from it fast. You lay down and do not press anything. It's not really fall asleep. It's like a stun. There are sometimes stuns and then you're in a, a worse state. If you want to recover from it, there's like a bar filling up and then it can happen anytime you're like above 70 of the 100 points. And then it has a chance just to happen any time when you're in those that range and it becomes a higher chance of it happening after a time. But whenever you press jump, it can force you into falling asleep essentially and getting stunned constantly. It just stop moving and the bar will go down a lot. Your attack is a lot weaker as well. It'll probably take four to kill him. Because he never actually saw us, the other orange lizards don't know that that just happened. See if this guy goes down, he should go down. Yep, they tend the path down here. They don't know you're there. There's probably a third one. It might get stunned here. Oh, I'm not wrong. I'll stay here a second. It's probably the third one in front of us, up here. Otherwise, he might have been the third one that we killed. Please. Okay, that was just a centipede. Alright. Alright, so the centipede killed this new. I'm gonna eat it. Yeah, you just worry about that guy, alright? Oh. Oh, that was interesting. I don't know if you saw that, actually. So the newt has a very special thing. Where if it charges up and doesn't, it does its attack and goes through a pipe, it'll keep all that speed. And so actually, you saw it go far. It hit this, but it kept going. And then it was just off in space, and it came back. Because it went so fast, it just pretended walls didn't exist. Walls in this game are very soft. If you get out of bounds, you're actually still fine. I believe that kills him. Yeah. So these are pesticides. They kill any bug. So the noodle is technically a bug. All right, so the glitch. I want to try to get this deer to turn around. There we go. The glitch. The glitch. The deer. Deer skip. Grass skip. Effectively, what it is, is you put a puffball in your stomach next to a deer. You have to be last in the room according to the deer. I'm currently actionable, by the way, right now. If I pause, it'll show where I am. I have to be next to the deer. I have to be second into the room to the deer. So if I'm first into the room, I will be inactionable right now, and the deer would be active. But essentially what's happening is I put the puffball in my stomach. The deer is super focused on it. I'm next to it. For some reason, it moves a certain distance downwards when I do that. 
And if that certain distance downwards goes into the ground, the game dies inside. This crashes on Switch and I believe PlayStation as well. Not sure about PlayStation actually. Um, crashes the game because it just kills a lot of stuff. If this is modded as well, it will throw a bunch of errors and will be really slow. Uh, but basically makes it so you're still actionable. All the other creatures are also still actionable other than the deer or you if you were first in the room to the deer. Um, you can still move around. The stuff doesn't update correctly. The room still, the screen will still show correctly. Do not go into pipes or it'll mess up as well. And we can just move around. You can pause to see where you are. We'll just keep going. Creatures are still very actionable. So if there's, our scavengers didn't like me right now, they could just be here and kill me. And I take it out. And everything works. Because the room technically isn't ro loaded in during all of that. The worm grass cannot kill me. Yeah, that's kind of about it. Alright, so we can't really karma cash for Hunter here. Easily. Actually, wait. There we go. So I could grab the spear. Or I could just do this. Be on the pole and then jump up. We have our centipede. We'll be here. Also, I forgot. We're about to finish Scholar. The other pearl you would get if you for somehow didn't have the other two pearls from before is the one on the right side of Sky Islands. So you just go up the, the tower off with off to the left. All right, we got Chieftain again from those mushrooms I threw with those guys. We almost have Hunter. We need to just sleep two more times. So, because I don't want to care about that, I can do it in this next part, but I really don't want to. It'll make sense in a second. So I'm just going to Karma Cash two times to get it. Perfect. So the reason why I, earlier I was saying you want to make sure you're at the right amount of food. You want to be at four food to sleep in the shelter or five food to sleep in the shelter. And then also have a centipede with you. If you have six or seven and you have the centipede with you, you'll just sleep normally again with that centipede. And that kind of defeats the purpose. We're starting to get saint now, which is the other thing we want to be going for. If we so can keep it up. So next, we're going to be entering. We're going to be entering the magical land, subterranean. And we're going to get the echo first. So it doesn't really matter yet. We're, we're going to be entering subterranean. We want to jump across the chasm, touch the maroon pearl that's on the other side. If we get stunned at fall off, we have to reset and get it because it's the best pearl we want to get. There's another one in subterranean way on the other side, but we're not going to worry about that one. But we really care about getting this maroon pearl. So we go down and we want to get a friend, either with a blue or a green lizard. Depending on the situation, one might be better than the other. Might be able to really do a blue lizard fast, but the green lizard will never die. Green lizards eat blue lizards, so you can feed a blue uh, blue lizard to a green lizard. Only green and teals actually eat other lizards, and they both eat the white lizard. So it can be very useful because it basically tames them instantly. Um, blue lizards like centipedes, and you can basically give them them one. You really want to give them two to make sure they're really good with you. Effectively, when you're becoming friends with a lizard, you give them something. If it's something that they like specifically, whether it's that or not, um, they'll get better rep individually with you, and then they'll go up, and if it's a certain amount, they'll like you. Sometimes they'll still follow you, but they don't entirely like you yet, which is very common for white lizards. And if you move between other regions, their, their nippiness of them biting you every little bit by bit will change depending on the 
rep you have with all other lizards and a rep you have with them. But the nippiness essentially is what we don't want because every time they bite, they still have the chance to instantly kill you. They can't actually grab you unless they instantly kill you. So we do not want that. Poppers can be useful, but I don't care. What we want to do... Okay. Well, we failed Saint. What we want to do is steal this back from him. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's bad. Oh, he'll be fine. Idiot. What we want to do is effectively to keep Saint, we come down, bite a centipede so it dies. It doesn't count as us killing it, despite us eating it like that. Then pick it up, give it to the blue lizard, take it from it, take it from their jaws, give it to them again, take it from their jaws, and then go into the shelter. Is what we want to do. We give it to them twice, so they'll definitely not be nippy. Now we're here. He wants the centipede, that's why he's like that. And then we're then we're, we're there with them. You may want to not try to go for Saint at all. I had to hit him with a rock to not die. I was able to pick it up and throw it well in his jaws. We'll start getting the friend, and then we'll start karma caching. We're gonna want to karma cache. Help! Help! I don't want to karma cache all the way to. Um, getting survivor. Getting the saint is what we're really going for. Because that centipede is in here, we're not able to starve normally, so I'm going to have to throw the centipede out every time, which can work badly. Sometimes the AI breaks and it never leaves the room, like is what it's doing right now. So that'll work out for us. So me eating that extra fruit was a bad idea. I can't starve in here with the... Be nibble. No, not worth it. Not worth it. back in here. So it's not worth it to... try to have the gate close on him. Try to keep it in here because he might get stuck out. Oh, he's got the blue. Nice. Do not bite him. Is he dead? Yeah, he's still dead. we're gonna be fine to quit out yep nope actually that's unfortunate we don't want it to close on him because there's a chance that he may clip into the ground by getting forced in the background and then be gone forever
Because he'll just fall through the, gra the world and has nothing to grab on. And then die. Let's still try it. Mark, of course it didn't. Because you are a loser, lizard. This is horrible. This is absolutely horrible. There we go. probably didn't get friend because of that because we probably lost it yep. like if we die we just straight up lose all of the the credit anyway Probably me throwing that rock too close to him didn't matter No strat to deal with this though. Why do you have that? Why? You were dead now. Okay, well, maybe I'll get a, a better friend that's actually good at what they do. Never mind. He's also really dumb. Right now, I just have to try to make it work. I'm thinking maybe we just go forward. Like he's incredibly dumb. Do not. What are you doing? You had to run away from him by running into him, I guess. No. 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 I'm eating it now. All right, now we're good. Maybe I should have just did that before, but the green lizard was very much in the way. Probably skip the green now. But yeah, getting the right amount of food is going to be really important for that one. Definitely don't want that to mess up like it's happening here. It's going to take a lot of time to get everything right. Now we can just pull Karma Cash, still Saint. And we're still getting Saint. Because us killing the centipedes by eating them alive does not count as actually killing them. Our teeth killed them, not us. So that doesn't lose us Saint. It does get us Hunter, though. Which is useful in certain situations. Depending on what you're going for. We're going to get friend now. 
We're still a bit of ways on Saint. We want to kill a mode lizard, which is going to be the last thing we need to do in the run. So we're going to want to keep going till Saint. So I like getting Saint now because this is the only time it's actually good to do it where it doesn't affect how you actually play the game. Because you're already doing friend a few times. And I'll be able to do that with conjunction of doing hunter just a little bit ago. Probably once or twice. You can do it right. You only have to do it one extra time. Oh my gosh, one extra time and so... Now we got Saint, and now we just need to kill the Mole Lizard. And if you do or don't have a blue kill, here's a good time, as well as the green kill. You could probably drag out the blue body, beat it to the green, and then Stab the green as you can. Right now isn't really the best position, this guy. Enough rocks in the way to make it work. He's in his slide move, so he's just gonna slide forward. Oh, no, he wasn't dead. Mind. Are you not dead, man? There you go. So, if he's stunned or dead while he did his slide move, he will constantly have no friction. He'll be able to just kind of slide into him forever. Pretty cool on that one. Alright, we have all the food we need. We only need to sleep one more time before ending the game. So you can straight up make it to this totem without having to jump off the left side, depending on how you do it. These poppers help a lot with the centipedes, depending on how many they're there. The lizard should get scared by the green or just straight up die for some reason. Having a rock against kelp doesn't really help, but he got distracted by the other guys. You can get a, you can get a full roll on this platform if you start all the way in the left and be able to make it up to the right. Otherwise, you have to come off to the other side. Uvenger. I was one handing this boat. I don't know if that's normally possible. Want to keep the poppers for now. So centipedes cannot see you, they can only hear your vibrations, so only when you're standing up, pretty much. If you, even if you're jumping while in the all fours mode, they don't know you're there. If you touch their feelers, they know you're there. If you're on their body, they don't know you're there, actually. It's only their feelers. Both heads have to touch you for them to kill you. Basic idea. Moles kind of work in the same way, except they can feel you with their body when you touch them, of course. Moles are a bit easier to tell when they know they hear you, because they light up. Just stab him three times. He has two health, so bringing him to zero doesn't actually give him the ability to die. Uh, you have to give him the negative numbers for him to die, start dying, have the potential to die. Every time they're in negative numbers, they have the potential to die. It doesn't mean they always die. They won't die immediately, that is. 
So one interesting thing is that lizards do not have a hard cap of the amount of damage that will make them instantly die. It has they only have the soft cap of this the amount of damage that'll make them have a chance of to die. They don't have the they will always die if they take this much damage. Comparative to every other creature in the game. Oh that's all the lizards though. This that's what I've heard. It makes sense from some of the things I've seen though. Because it just means they have a chance to live much longer than they should. They could technically live forever if they rolled perfectly. This being all lizard. Alright, now we end the game. At this point, the run is not different. However, it is going to be a bit different. Because if you've done a lot of other speedruns, you're actually going to have the enlightenment now. You're actually going to be glowing, which isn't terribly common. Now, I'm not going to actually do all of depths because there's no reason for you guys to see that. You guys have seen quite enough of that yourselves. So this, at this point, I'm going to stop the run. I've done everything. And going forward is everything that we need. One thing you do need do i do want to bring up is that you can technically do the that double jump the cloud jump over right at the end of the guardian's room meaning this jump here to actually enter instead of needing a spear or other rock you do need something to throw so you do need a rock to actually jump over to get up to that platform instead of having to stab the platform to get up to on top of it this is the one right before the the three guardians it's the room you do the the despawn in but yes all right thank you guys for listening to my 100 percent guide i hope this was somewhat useful in some cases i kind of didn't have too much to say or i might have said too much but now there's a pretty good idea of what the run details and a little bit on some of the other movement that could be useful what some of the things to think about very much there could be a much better route than this one, but right now this is the most refined route that currently exists, given that, well, right now I'm the one that's really pushing the routes. Hefmaz has helped out a bit with some arts, but yeah, all right. Thank you guys for watching. I'll be editing this a bit to hopefully some things make a bit more sense as well, but yeah, all right. Additionally, there's all the other guides that I've made for some of the other categories. I'm intending to do the Hunter ones soon enough. And then to contact me or anyone else that deals a lot with these types of runs or any type of great amount of movement, either just saying it in the YouTube comments or just going on the, the Rain World General Discord and the Meta and Tech and Movement channels can answer quite a lot of the questions on that Discord for anything to do with speedrunning or movement, etc. All right. Thank you. Goodbye.